Hi, this is Steve Michelotti of the Azure Government Engineering Team. I'm joined here today by AJ, Lead Program Manager of the Azure SQL Database Team. Welcome, AJ. Good morning, thank you. So we're here to talk about advanced data security uh, with Azure SQL Database on Azure Government. Now, uh, Azure SQL Database is a service we've had in Azure Government for quite some time. Right. But now we are excited about some of these new features we're getting uh, with advanced data security. So. Can you give us just an introductory on what, we're, what will we mean when we're talking about advanced data security yeah. in Azure Database? Absolutely. So one of the uh, biggest things customers worry about when they are not just in uh, cloud, but even on-premises, how do they protect data? And it's very important that being a database service that we provide the necessary tools and capabilities for customers to be able to do everything from secure their data to even monitor and get alerted on any uh, potential issues. So advanced data security is our investments to make sure the customers can get end-to-end -end experience with uh, their database and get full insights into how the data is used to how it's protected and get okay. necessary alerts. All right, makes sense. So uh, what do we mean specifically when we're talking about some of the things you just mentioned? Yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, deep dive into some of the capabilities. Uh, so basically with advanced data sec security today in Azure SQL database, we provide three main capabilities. The first one is vulnerability assessment. The second one is data classification. And the third one is advanced threat protection. And we give you dashboards to go uh, get a central pane of glass view across your subscription for all the alerts and uh, events so you can get a good understanding of how secure your database is. And I can quickly deep dive into each of this. Great, and we'll, sounds good. Yeah, let's talk about each one. Yeah, so let's look at vulnerability assessment first. So uh, this is the first uh, entry point for securing your data estate in your database services. So think of this as your uh, uh, single tool to help you discover and track all kinds of configuration issues or misconfigurations. So uh, this, is, this is a way for you to baseline your security on your deployments. So what we encourage customers to do is the very first time they deploy a, a SQL database, uh, even starting from their dev test environment, run this tool so you can catch all kinds of issues and then configure it according to best practices and baseline it. So that way you know that you, are, you have secured your system according to your business requirements and then you'll get alerted if there's any violation of those. Okay, makes sense. And a couple of Examples of this is, as you can see in the screenshot here, uh, this dashboard will tell you all the security checks that passed or failed based on how you have configured it. And uh, at the bottom of the report, you can go through each rule and click on it and it will give you full details of each rule, uh, what was the query that was run and what was the uh, reasons why it failed. And it will give you the actual uh, remediation action right there so you can take that action. So it really is an actionable list Correct. of you know what your best practices currently look like. Correct. Okay. And this is also a useful report which you can export and give it to auditors if they want uh, to do additional investigation if there was a malicious attack. Okay, great. Right. Uh, the second capability that we are adding is uh, what's called SQL data classification, uh, especially even with uh, our regulations like GDPR. It's very important that customers are able to understand where the sensitive data is in their database. So data classification helps you with exactly that. It helps you discover all your sensitive columns. For example, if you have a table storing credit card number or social security number, et cetera, which are sensitive, uh, this service will scan your database, look for any sensitive columns, and then give you a report of all the columns that it discovered. And it applies a default label. It can be anything from an informational level to very highly confidential GDPR rating. And you can apply the default recommendations that Microsoft uh, provides, or you can apply it according to your own needs. And once you apply the label, these labels are persisted along with the column. So the beauty of this is once uh, it's persisted, if you have auditing turned on, which we recommend customers have, any access to the sensitive columns is fully audited. So at any given time, you can go to the audit logs and see if somebody ran a query against this 
uh, sensitive column, uh, who was the user, which location, what was the query that was run, and how much data was uh, touched by the query, et cetera. Makes so sense. it gives you full vis visibility again. So certainly in the government space, this is a hugely important topic. Absolutely, We're yes. running in higher compliance environments. So uh, yeah, I want to know about it. If I have a column in my database called social security number, yeah, we yeah. should have some additional controls there. Right, so OK, right. sounds great. Yep. And the last capability as part of the advanced data security is advanced threat protection. Uh, this is really to detect potential attacks against your database. So some of the examples are things like SQL injection attacks. So from a bad application where somebody is trying to inject into your database to extract data. Or if you have uh, unusual access, let's say somebody is logging in from an unfamiliar location or data exfiltration or brute force attacks. So all these will fire alerts. And then you can also subscribe to email alerts where you can your administrators can get notified. Uh, plus, it can also be integrated with Azure Security Center or OMS. And you can do, uh, again, actionable alerts where you can go to remediate this and take actions on tightening access to your database. OK, so this is I can subscribe to alerts in virtual real time that someone yep. attempted, for example, SQL injection right. rather than I get a report that, hey, a week ago, someone may have tried to do something. No, yep. this tells me in much more real time. Correct. And we look for patterns because we also want to avoid noises. So we look for patterns of same kind of attack happening because sometimes some attacks may not be, uh, so some of the queries may be normal for the business. So there's a way to uh, distinguish patterns of attack versus normal usage. OK. Yeah. All right. So the uh, little more uh, details on the threat protection suite itself. So the types of attacks we pr we detect are attempt for SQL injection versus actual attack. So because sometimes it's maybe just bad app code where we detect it's not really an attack, but somebody may have developed a bad query which is against best practices. So we distinguish the uh, attempt versus the attack. And then the anomaly, uh, anomalous access patterns, like logging in from unusual location, or uh, someone is trying to do brute force of SQL credentials, like uh, basically trying to wrong password or different passwords with an invalid login, or uh, logging in from un uh, un uh, harmful applications which are not supported, et cetera. Or if you extract a lot of data, which is unusual, because it's very un very rare for application to go around a select star query and okay. without any predicates to ent extract the entire data set. And uh, so these are all the different types of patterns we detect and we, uh, we can fire alerts on. And here's a quick screenshot of the Azure Secur Security Center. And you can see here that we provide a single pane. And this is not just for data services. But rest of the Azure services also feed their uh, information into the security blade. And you will get a comprehensive view of uh, all kinds of uh, attacks and threat protection. And you can click on this, and uh, you can take actions based on this. I know in the government space in particular, we've had a huge amount of interest in Azure Security Center. Yeah. So the fact that this integrates with Azure Security Center so right. well is a really nice plus. Right, that's great. And we are also working to extend this to OMS where customers can also monitor using their own, uh, if you have third-party monitoring tools, and eventually uh, through audit logs and event hub, they can build their own dashboards on top of what we provide by default. OK, yeah. great. So uh, let me quickly show you some of these uh, things in action. Excellent. And uh, we'll go from there. So here I have uh, uh, my SQL Server Management Studio, and I'm connected to my SQL database service in the government cloud. Yep. And I have a database called My Bad Website DB. So I'm going to be using this database to simulate some of the issues that we just discovered. So the first thing is I would go to the portal now. And what I would need to do is turn on auditing. So if I go to the audit, auditing uh, pane of my SQL instance, uh, you can see that I have turned on auditing. And I need to specify a storage account where the audit logs will be saved. Right. So this is where whenever you do the vulnerability assessment scan or the threat detection, all the logs are sent to this. And that's the data that is used to fire the alerts. Okay. So once auditing is turned on, it's very straightforward. I just have to go to advanced data security. And I just turn it on here. Okay. And once I do that, I can pick um, my vulnerability assessment. And I can choose to do periodic scan, like a one-time scan. Or if you wanted to schedule it to run, let's say, uh, every 
the default is it'll run every Sunday at uh, midnight. So you can set that up too. And you can also set uh, an email address where you want to send the emails to of the whatever the scan reports were. Because if somebody uh, changed something on the system and you want to know, this, this is a good way to get notified. Uh, you can also enable the advanced threat protection, which is real-time threat detection. And here I have enabled the alert to be sent to uh, two people, including myself and one of my colleagues. And you can pick the type of uh, alerts you want to like, uh, that you want to be notified, like SQL injection, uh, vulnerability, data exfiltration, et cetera. Very cool. So that's even customizable which alerts you want. Yep. Okay, great. So once that is done, uh, all you have to do is now you can go to your database and uh, if you click on your database, you will uh, see the dashboard. So if you scroll down to that, you will see if there are any alerts here, real time. If not, if there are no alerts, you can still go to the Advanced Data Security Blade. And for your database, you will see three tiles here, uh, one for each of the services I mentioned. So let's look at the vulnerability assessment slide, a tile first. So I'll go ahead and click this. So the first time, um, you won't have this report, so you can hit a scan here. Okay. Or manually, you can scan anytime you want. Or if you have a scheduled scan like I showed you earlier, it can it runs on the Sunday schedule, as I mentioned. So what you see in the report is on the top, you have a summary of the assessment. So you it's basically uh, has uh, two types of metrics. One is how many of the checks passed versus failed. And then we categorize it by risk for all the failures. So we can see here that there were four failures and two of them were categorized as high risk and medium risks. So now let's look at the details of the, of the failed ones. So if you go down here, each, each one is a rule. So you, you can see that the name is self-descriptive. So for example, if you want to look at my database, it says sensitive data columns should be classified. So I click on this, and now it gives you a complete detail of what we actually did. So it, it gives a full description of uh, what this alert means and what best practices Microsoft recommends. So in this case, we tells that we have detected that there are some sensitive columns in the table which have not been classified. So it could be uh, vulnerable for uh, some malicious user to steal that data, right? Okay. So if you go down, scroll down further, it gives you the full list of all the columns we detected. And a couple of important pieces of information to note here is, we, we tell you what type of information it is. So like for example here, if it's like a usernames or like credentials, right? And if you have uh, like addresses are all contact info and passwords are all credentials. And if you have account number, credit card, we tell you what type of information. Okay. And then we, we give you a recommendation on what level of sensitivity it is. Uh, so it really right? is actionable. Yeah, so we tell you that these are all, we consider it to be marked as confidential, uh, some of these are more uh, sensitive, so we confident this is the highest rating GDPR. So, and then we give you links to some documentation to read more about it on how to protect it using other features in databases like always encrypted or data encryption. And we give you the script here, so you can copy the script and using use your favorite query tool to deploy this, or if you want to do it through uh, like PowerShell or uh, the command line, you can. Uh, copy the script and put it there and then do that. Or you can do it real time here by click here to remediate. Wow. And it'll ask, it'll, it'll log you into this instance and apply it immediately. So we really make it easy for you here. Right. Tell you exactly what script or yeah. if you just want a one click experience. Yep. Okay. So, uh, and one more thing I want to highlight here is you have two buttons here, approve as baseline and clear baseline. So what if uh, these are actually valid, right? In, for your business, hey, you're okay with allowing these users or this level of sensitivity, and you really don't want to uh, apply any labels, you can say approve as baseline. So what that means is next time you run this rule check, we will skip this one for okay. these tables and columns because we already keep track of it. But later, if business policies change and you want to re uh, reset your rules, you can come back here and clear the baseline. So Microsoft gives their recommended best practices, but you yep. still have full control and the ability to customize. Correct, correct. So now if I go back to, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, approve as baseline. So it's it's set this as baseline. Now let's go back to the report. And you can see that uh, uh, I can go ahead and scan this again. 
So, next time we will see that this will be marked as uh, baseline. So, while that is running, so I will also show you some pass rules. Uh, so, you can see that there are a ton of these rules which are already configured according to what we think are best practices. So, you do not need to change, change, take any action, but, but you can actually go and change it if your business rules change. And you actually have a record of what was checked. Correct. So, you can go and look at your scan history and you have history historical reports to all the things that were there. Plus, you can also export your uh, scan results if you need to send it to your auditors. And uh, now, if I go back here, you can see that the mm. number reduced by one because right. one of them was um, in my baseline, right? Okay. So now we. So this is how you would use the vulnerability assessment, and then you would. You, uh, this way, you can configure all your rules. You understand how your security footprint is for your database service, and then it gives you an easy way to take actions. Uh, either directly in the portal or through scripts if, the, if you want to deploy it across multiple databases. Great. Okay, so that was vulnerability assessment. Then right. you also talked about data classification? Correct. So, uh, so we saw in the vulnerability assessment report that there was uh, some rules that were flagged as sensitive columns need to be flagged. So, if you click on that, it will actually take you to the data dis discovery and classification part of this uh, tool. So, let me click on that tile and show you uh, what this tool provides. So, by default, nothing is classified. So, this graph shows that no, uh, the overview is basically zero columns. So, but on the top, you can see we have this notification which says that, hey, we have detected 23 recommendations. So, you can click on that and it will take you down to the classification report that uh, we recommend. So, you can see again here that uh, all the columns we think are sensitive. Uh, we tell you the information type what type of information is contained in that column and we tell you what type of label you need to apply there. So, at this point, uh, again, you have two things. You can uh, select each one individually and apply, the, uh, apply like for example, in this case, uh, let us take this password one. I can say accept selected recommendations and uh, uh, so, it will basically now classify this column. 